Hey, AP Bio, it is me, Mrs. Willis, and I'm here to talk to you today about biodiversity and ultimately why it is important that we have a biodiverse Earth. We're also going to end learning a little bit about how biodiversity is measured in a system. So let's go ahead and get started. Biodiversity is a measure of how different life is on our Earth. So if you're taking a look at the differences of life forms, then you would definitely be looking at biodiversity. Now there's three general types that ecologists and scientists can focus on, and that is genetic diversity. So like how different are the genes in a system? There's species diversity. So how many different species exist in an area? And then we have ecosystem diversity. So how different and how many different types of habitat do we have in a system? All of these are considered um, to be biodiversity because these all involve life forms. But today here in biology, we are going to focus on the species diversity. And there's a couple of terms that you're going to need to get comfortable with. And the first one here is species richness. So species richness is basically how many species are in an area. So if you were to go count up in a system, like you're looking at this picture here, and you see a green turtle and a Moorish idol, and it looks like another species of fish there in the background, you would say, okay, there are three different species. So ultimately what you just did there is you calculated the species richness of the area. Compare that to species evenness. So in species evenness, what you're looking at is are there equal amounts of each of the species? So looking at the picture, you can see community one and community two, they actually have the same species richness. They have four species of trees in each of the communities, right? You can see that there's four. But community two and community one are not even when it comes to species evenness. You can see in community one, they're actually quite even. There's an equal distribution of each of those types of trees. However, that's not the same in community two. They are not even. In fact, you see the dominance of one type of species over the others. So in species evenness, you're looking, are there equal amounts of each species in the area? You may be asking yourself, why should we care if there are a whole bunch of species on this earth? Well, to be honest, a lot of these species do provide services to us, and those are called ecosystem services. So let's take a look at some of these ecosystem services that exist. Number one, oxygen is created from all of the vegetation and the phytoplankton that exist in our waterways. So of course, if we did not have oxygen, we could not perform cellular respiration and make energy for ourselves. Also, if we didn't have vegetation keeping our soil in place, we would have a lot more flooding and erosion on Earth. What about the bacteria in the ground and all the decomposers that are in the ground that are generating soil nutrients to make sure that we have fertile soil? Um, this fertile soil obviously feeds us. We grow our food and um, we can make profits obviously from the farming business. Our bees and moths and butterflies, they are all pollinators. They are definitely assisting with the reproduction of plants that are edible for humans. And our fungi. The fungus are super important in cycling nutrients so that they can get back into the ground or ultimately the waterway to help um, other things grow. So it's definitely important that we protect these species so that we can get nutrients back in the ground. And lastly, we have many pests that we um, would not like to have on our plants. And so sometimes we do use other species to control our agricultural pests 
to ensure that there's food production. We also need species for economic things and economic goods, and one of those economic goods is food. So many of the animal species that we have here, we do raise for food services. We also get a lot of medicines from plants in nature. So for example, a lot of our painkillers, they do come from the opium poppy. Another thing that people like to do with species is something called ecotourism. So they will travel and go to different destinations to see the different species of the area. So for example, a lot of people do go to Costa Rica, for example, and they pay to go there and they pay the entrance fees to their national parks in the hopes of seeing things like sloths and monkeys and all the different bird species that they have in that beautiful country. So that's a prime example of what we call ecotourism. What is the actual number of species here on Earth? Well, I don't think anyone really knows. There's about 1.3 to 1.5 million that are actually cataloged, but there are so many more that have not been, uh, I wouldn't say discovered, but we just don't know about them and um, they haven't been written down. So a lot of these undiscovered species are small things that we have not seen or we haven't paid attention to, and those are things like the insects, the fungi, and the bacteria. There are mathematical models that are used to measure the biodiversity of an area, and the two that come up in AP Bio are the Shannon Index and the Simpsons Index. They're similar in their mathematical way, so you can see down there the formulas and, and how they're calculated. The Shannon Index tends to be more of a mathematical model if you want to see changes in the species richness. So if you want to see what's going on with the differences in the number of species, you would tend to use the Ch Shannon Index. The Simpsons Index, however, is looking at more of the changes in the species evenness. So are the species even through time in the area? Both will give you a good picture as to what's going on with the biodiversity of the area, and both are usually used to calculate the biodiversity of an area. All right, everyone, that concludes our little biodiversity talk, and I hope that was great.